You know, them folks sure are having a good time. Reckon they should be, too, because they found something real special. Yes, hurry, Bob. And you won't believe this, but they owe it all to an old uncle of mine. Yep, my old uncle Thomas Alva Hayes, he was known as smartest inventor the world's ever seen, human or otherwise. Why, there weren't nothing he couldn't figure out. You know, he come up with the ID for cotton gin long before that Whitney feller, <laughs> but he drank it all up the first week. Well, let me see now. Oh, it was long about 1876, right after he'd helped Bell invent the telephone, when he come up with an ID for cannon smoke. He just hated to see all that smoke from his experiments going to waste. And he figured if he could can that smoke, he could sell it to the engines out west. After all, when an engine needed to send up a smoke signal, he wouldn't have to fuss and bother over a hot fire. He could just open up a can. Well, my uncle worked on that ID for, all oh, 84 days and 67 nights, till he finally figured out a way to fill a bunch of them cans with smoke. Some folks thought my uncle was a wee mite catched in the head, but he knowed right and then and there that he'd invented something special. He was right proud of it, too, though, eh? Especially that colored smoke for important messages. So he packed a supply of them canned smoke signals, and he come all the way from Altoony, Pennsylvania, to Bozeman, Montana, just looking for them engines. <laughs> Well, folks, 
folks is just naturally friendly out west and didn't take my uncle long to make himself to home. And it weren't long after that before he come across some friendly Indians who is just a bustin' to try out them canned smoke signals. <laughs> so my uncle showed them how simple they was to use. Seems there was just one slight miscalculation. You see, when my uncle canned them smoke signals, it was cold weather. But when the Indians opened them up, it was a warm day. And they didn't work, naturally. Seems that smoke really had to be cold to do right. Yeah, but when winter come and snows fell on that spot where them cans of smoke was open, why, you had the best dead burn cold smoke in the whole United States and Texas. Well, sir, they call the spot Bridger Bowl after another old uncle of mine, and folks come from all over just to find that cold smoke. Because, you see, when you mix in some of that snow, why, you've got the finest, lightest powder you ever wanted to send your skis through. We didn't all start off that good. No, sirree, Bob. Fact is that their cold smoke can be mighty tricky sometimes.
sooner or later, most of us had to get a little help. Because there's a great bunch of cowboys at the bowl. Yeah, even some cowgirls, too. Just a raring to help you learn to ski that old coal smoke. Snow's actually the easiest snow to ski in. Most folks makes it more work than it really is. You just have to relax and let your skis run. Your mental attitude's important too. Don't fight it. Keep a good balance and equal weight on both skis. And don't sit too far back either. And if you're new at it, just start off in all oh, maybe six inches and work your way up. And it's important to develop rhythm too. Most folks want to be instant skiers. Fact is, they ought to just relax and have themselves a good time. Bridger's one of the best spots to learn how to ski. Cause if you can handle Bridger well, shucks why you can ski any place, right as rain. That's cause the mountain builds skiers. It makes you learn. It's the terrain here. Long, smooth, intermediate slopes, and good steep mogully hills for experts like me. Skiing's the kind of sport that should always be fun no matter how good you are. It's non-competitive, but mighty challenging. What's more, it's good physical exercise. And the instructors here want you to have fun on your skis, especially as you learn. Hey, just look at them young'uns, would you? Why they take to skis like a thirsty coyote at the watering trough. to ski them moguls, you ought to start off on the smaller ones and less steep terrain, so you can learn how to absorb the shock with your legs, and how to pick a line. You gotta learn to read the terrain too, and ski aggressively but relaxed, flexible you know. Most folks sit back too far, and they're, they're too low on their skis. Now they stiffen up and fight for their balance all the time. Now the pole is your crutch, it's a stability factor a timing device, and even a brake. It's got to be planted at just the right time in a turn. And your attitude's important too. So just be yourself. Relax and have a good time. And before you know it, why, you'll be riding them moguls fancier than a champion bucking horse rider.
Shucks, buckaroos, I've ridden that winter range so much, I know how all that exercise and brisk wind in your face can make you hanker for some relaxation. <laughs> and maybe tie on the feed bag, too. Yeah. And after a day on the slopes, sometimes you come down plum tuckered out, just a bustin' to hightail it to the chuck wagon. The swaller and get out trough, we calls it. And maybe find a good bunk for the night and have some relaxation in between. And folks who ski bridger have all that no further away than you can throw a bull by the horn. Folks just naturally take a hanker in the Bridger Bowl. That's cause they can have old fashioned fun here without all that fancy frill. The whole family too. <laughs> just look at them buckaroos. From the old folks right on down to them young whippersnappers. All skiing that cold smoke. Just as easy as that. That's the story of skiing at Bridger Bowl, Montana. Oh, you're wondering what happened to my old uncle, the fellow who got it all started. Well, sir, them Indians chased him all over the countryside. They was gaining on him, too. He was still toting along some of them cans of smoke. Well, sir, about a hundred miles south of Bridger Bowl, he plumb tuckered out. He dropped the rest of them cans of smoke. And you know what? You can still see him there, all the smoking to this very day. And folks calls it Yellowstone National Park. <laughs> he had dared tootin'. 